Hey everyone. Hi. Welcome. Yeah, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, um, I'm Sarah Chapman and I'm the executive director of the nonprofit Media Burn Archive, which is based in Chicago. Media Burn collects, preserves, and distributes documentary video produced by artists, activists, and community groups. Our mission is to use archival media to deepen context and encourage critical thought through a social justice lens. If you're not familiar with our work, make sure to head over to mediaburn.org after the screening to watch thousands of hours of streaming videos and to follow us on email or social media to find out about future events in this series, Virtual Talks with Video Activists. Today, we're pleased to present a screening and discussion with Lori Little. Um, originally from Canada, Lori is a Chicago-based filmmaker, artist, and educator. Her award-winning films have been screened at festivals and exhibitions worldwide. Little's observational documentaries and fiction films work to inspire dialogue and advocacy for change. Her film Sisters March connects voices of hope, empowerment, and intersectionality during the Women's March. Totalité about photographer and um umbrophile Richard Bellia looks at Bellia's passion for the creative process and its parallels to nature. The film was a collaboration with Justin T. Jones. Lori is currently in post on the documentary Musher, following four female dog sled racers on the Lake Superior South Shore race circuit. She's working with film partner Anu Rana on Musher. She is simultaneously in production on the doc The Light of Truth, a monument for Ida B. Wells with partners Rana Siegel and Judy Singleton. Most recently, Lori's short film Canopy screened at the Field Museum's Night of Ideas just before the pandemic hit. Her film about a vegan food drive, a collaboration with cruelty-free You and Me, I Grow Chicago, and Luminous Films partner Bridget Wilson is safely in production. Uh, her feature film that I cannot pronounce, inspired by Totalité, is also in production. Um, an, eye, an eye on Belia. An eye on Belia. Yeah. In French? What language is that? An eye is, uh, is I in French. Okay, got it. Like, interesting <laughs> the way it's spelled. I took Spanish, so I don't... <laughs> um, so Lori holds a BFA from York University and an MFA in film and video from Columbia College, Chicago, where she teaches the classes Documenting Social Injustice and Culture, Race, and Media. Her work as a digital artist on the Aldi account with Publicis Group Chicago, The Pub, Slash The Pub, Slash Leo Burnett, helps to support her filmmaking habit. And you can check out more of her work at luminousfilms.com. Um, all of the films I mentioned will be screening either in full or in part tonight. Um, and we will follow up with links if you didn't already to watch the full versions of the one, some of the ones that are gonna be showing just excerpts from. Um, so I think we are ready to begin. Um, and Lori, do you wanna say anything before the first film? Um, oh, well, thanks for coming, everybody. Welcome, and really excited to see great friends uh, and new friends here. So um, the first film I'm showing, I did pull up some um, films that we've done in the past, so from our archives, and then some that we are showing, um, that we are working on right now, actually. Uh, how many people got a chance to look at um, Totalité and uh, Sisters March pre um, pre this session. Did anyone? Oh, Craig, great. Thanks, great. Okay, no, uh, that's good. Let's take a look at this one. Um, this is the Disability Pride Parade, right? Yes, yeah. it is. This first one. Okay. <laughs> Okay, Dominica, go ahead. Yeah, if you didn't understand, she said, Hello, Chicago, I'm disabled and proud. Disability pride is about being committed to showing that you are proud of yourself and you have no problem with uh, perceptions of yourself as different or whatever. I mean, what is normal anyway? I, am, 
I was like hiding my disability. Yeah, I came. So you probably go, oh my lord, this is different people, different different disabilities and wow. other people and all people. I mean, it's just celebrating what we're about and be a part of it. It means a lot. I think it's been a long time coming for people with disabilities to really feel good about themselves. Growing up, I always tried to hide my disability, and it was not that long ago when I finally came out as a little person, and my whole life changed. You know, life goes on with or without you, and I'm obviously with life. It's Chicago's sixth annual Disability Pride Parade, celebrating with joy the first and oldest Disability Pride Parade with the awareness that the mission is to change the way people think about and define disability by promoting the belief that all people with disabilities deserve respect. From here on out, I am committing to continuing the struggle for disability rights. Are you guys with me? The dictionary that I read said that a handicap is something that will get in your way, something that can slow you down, or something that more than likely can stop you completely. The last time I checked, I was a person, not a thing. I do things I don't do just for myself, but I do it for the rest of the community and for individuals because the disability community, when we think about the 10% of the population in the United States has a disability, that's huge. So when we're talking about community, we're a big we're, we're the biggest minority. We're bigger than any minority that exists in, in the United States. I have one boy. Amber has one boy. Howard has one boy. But we all have a boy. And collectively, as a group, we are unbelievably powerful. We're part of the diverse human experience. And that we should be treated like everybody else. And, and, uh, and, and we should be allowed the freedom and the access uh, that others enjoy. It's our time. It's our time to shine. We'll come out, speak out, and be loud about it. Uh, great. Um, so that was wonderful. Um, I wanted to, I forgot to say before we started that I think the format is going to be, we're going to play a video, take maybe like two questions and then move on to the next. So if anyone has a question or comment now, you can either unmute yourself and say it, or you can write it in the chat or you can um, raise your hand. Um, and we can talk about this for a couple minutes and then move on to the next one. Yes. I, there's a hand right. Yes. Larry Lundy. Yeah, hi. Uh, great film. Um, and I wondered if there's been any follow-up from that and feedback and what, what happened. It's 10 years ago, and I'm just wondering what, what ensued since. Well, great to see you, Larry. Great to see you. <laughs> um, so, yeah, um, what happened uh, since that film? Uh, well, Anu and I got together and started making films together after that, which was exciting. Uh, that was our first project together. And um, after that, we made a film called Variations with Reva Lehrer, 
um, Chris Foreman and Chris Lenzo, two um, well-known Chicago artists who have disabilities. And we'll be showing a little tiny clip from that. Okay. But that came out of this. And nice. then the Pride Parade uh, organizers use this film every year to, you know, it's on their website. So it's a way nice. to kind of get people excited to come out. Yeah. I had no idea that this even existed, so I, I thank you very much for enlightening me. Great. Yeah. I Hi, Judy. Hi, Denise. Hi, Enid. Is there another question or should we move on? All right, let's let's move on. What um, do you, what do you want to say about the next or the next video? Okay, uh, yeah, the next one, uh, Levi is. Which one is? I should have the lineup in front of me, right? Day, day on the force is next. <laughs> oh, okay. So this was actually a short reel. So this will show you a piece of day on the force and a little little piece of variations that I was just telling Larry about. Um, it was created for a women in films um, uh, talk at um, uh, a special event. So I thought I'd throw it in there because it goes back to one of my very first, my first feature length documentary, A Day on the Force. Anyway, enjoy. I was crying in the locker room. I can't put it into words. I'm getting teary now. It's awesome. It's a dream. Jumped out of airplanes, played rugby, played basketball. Just tops it. I think especially with like Title IX stuff coming up, to have um, the opportunity to be out here today. Something that wasn't available, you know, five, six years ago. crying in like the first huddle you know I'm, I'm telling you it was like oh my goodness I get to play football so I'm in the huddle and I'm bent down you know in the huddle and I'm like wiping away tears like okay we're about to do this get on the line the first hit and it was just like I, I can't imagine why they wouldn't allow women to do it on a professional level I don't think you could get a group of guys that that would play on a professional level for free you know, I don't think you'll get them traveling. I don't think you'll get them uh, coming out 7 to 9 o'clock at night with no pay and, you know, in the conditions we've had to, you know, like really practice in. You're not going to get that. So I think women are just like, this is an opportunity for us no matter what. If we have to practice in somebody's backyard, you know, let's do it. As you're moving to your group shape, say hello, hello, hello. Yeah. How many more things are we going to do after this? The only thing we have after this is the crisscross. One goes this way, and one goes this way. Left towards the middle, last long to the right. It's the Disability Pride Parade! Let's go! I find human variation to be central to human beauty is part of the beauty of looking at the natural world is that you have a bird that looks like this and a bird that looks like that and a bird that looks like this and you know thousands of different kinds of birds all occupying overlapping um, biospheres and that that's part of the wonder and not understanding why people don't see that in people. That they don't understand that part of what's breathtaking about us is our variance and our flexibility. When I think about human beauty, um, it tends to be a lot about 
how we flow into different forms and different adaptations inside and outside. I think the word disability is unavoidable, useful, and shorthand for a lot of stuff. But I really, really wish that there was something more that wouldn't make us all sound like we were broken. Mm -hmm. Which is what disability does. Yeah. Sounds like broken people. Well, great. That, that was really neat to see since a couple weeks ago we did one of these talks with Eleanor Boyer and she had made a film about um, or video about women who played rugby in the 70s. So it's kind of cool to see both those. I didn't know there was, I didn't know about this women's football league either. Oops. Um, I have a couple of questions uh, for Lori. Um, who was the woman that we just saw in the previous clip about disability? And second, a more general question, how do you um, come up with the subjects of the, the topics of your film? I, I mean, the, I never knew there was a disability parade in Chicago, nor did I ever know that there was a women's tackle football team. Um, yeah, how do, you, how do you find out about this? Great question, Judy, <laughs> thanks. Um, well, my friend Ronit, who, um, who I still make films with, although she's uh, in Israel right now, um, she came to me and said, hey, there's this great uh, team um, that's starting up, do you wanna come film it? And we kind of roll like that. So I went, sure, let's check this out. And then before we knew it, she found um, a competition that was called the 72 hour feature project. And, uh, and we decided to make a feature f documentary, which was our first feature film about the Chicago Wims, uh, the uh, Chicago Force, the first uh, professional tackle football team. So uh, through Ronit, who is a real sports buff. Uh, and then um, Reva Lehrer is the uh, woman you saw in um, our variations film. She has a book that just came out. Um, Golem, gosh, I'm sorry. I should have the, uh, I'll look the title up for you right now. Um, she's a very well known, uh, amazing artist, visual artist, and quite well known in Chicago. Um, um, she also does a lot of work uh, around disability having grown up with spina bifida and um, trying to, you know, really talk about philosophically about how uh, we need to change the way we look at disability, as you can see in the film. Uh, a lot of the people I worked with through the disability community, uh, again, it came through a friend of mine who I worked with, Tom O'Dowd, you know, he introduced me to Re Reva, I got to know Reva, things kind of mushroom through friends and connections. So, Great, kind of thank you. <laughs> Any more questions? Yeah, I, a question I have is, uh, when was the, when did you do the shooting of the Women's Football League uh, team? I mean, and uh, where was that, where did that take place? Yeah, so um, that was in 2007. It was the inaugural year of that team that we did that shoot. And as I was saying uh, earlier, it was the reason that happened, that film came about was because we took part in the 72 hour feature project. So I got a bunch of my friends together, Ronit and I, and you know, Ronit and I met at Columbia College, I have to say. Uh, she was in the doc program with Judy Hoffman, who many of you know quite yeah. well. And thank you, Judy, if you're out there, um, for getting this uh, happening uh, today. Um, so I was actually in the narrative, uh, 
program, more of a fiction filmmaker, and but I was a shooter, so that's how I ended up shooting with Roni on a lot of her projects. So we, uh, yeah, so that was done the inaugural season, 2007, and they uh, did play, they ended up winning the um, finals a few years ago, a number of years ago, but that team eventually dissolved because they did have a lot, quite a long run and a lot of good support, but uh, I think the money and the support just wasn't there to carry it on further. So it did end a couple of years ago. Um, very interesting. And there's many teams in the league. There's several leagues in the United States and Canada. And, um, and they are still, a lot of them are still going strong. Well, obviously not right now, but <laughs> yeah. Did that answer your question, Larry? Yeah, great. Anybody else? Lori? Hi, Craig. Hi. I wonder if you could uh, talk a little bit about gaining access um, it, to the films, you know, just the Pride Parade or the Disability Pride Parade, for example. Um, how did you gain access to doing that? Was it just through friends and somebody said, sure, or, and also um, just the ins and outs of that. Maybe you could just talk a little bit about gaining access, particularly in documentary, because, you know, people have to be okay with what you're doing. Yeah, good question, Craig. So basically what happened was, uh, since I had friends at Access Living in the Disability Community through Riva, um, I believe it was so many years ago, but I believe Riva um, recommended me as, a media, as the media person for the Dis Disability Pride Parade organization. So I was going to the board meetings, the organizing meetings from an early, early on um, and made, you know, a, a t-shirt graphic and did some media work and then uh, suggested this short film. So to promote it. And um, so I had the full blessing of the organizers of the Disability Pride Parade because of that. So again, through you know friends recommending me to be a media person on the board, um, and then we continued friendships years after. Um, many of those people are amazing activists and um, work really hard at, at getting access for the community in Chicago. So, um, and then I always, you know, we always have, um, we always talk to everyone beforehand and uh, before we start shooting and, you know, I, uh, I think it's uh, very important to uh, become close enough to uh, have a certain trust from people. And some people, if some people aren't interested in being filmed, it's a lot of times we'll have some way of uh, learning who doesn't want to be on film at some of these events. And, and we'll just let them know that we won't have them on. So there's a certain, there's certain ways of getting around that also. But of course a parade or an event is always, there's a certain amount of uh, free you know, access to that. Um, it's understood that there are gonna be cameras out there, so. Um, there's a question from the chat. Um, Lisa Oppenheim asks, it seems you try to get a sense of the scene rather than talking heads. The scenes are lovely. Is that a style choice? Yes, Lisa, yes. Um, I Actually, that tends, I think that's a trend now more than ever for documentary filmmakers is also getting away from talking heads, you know, because um, it is a very, it's a very taste style. It's a kind of an observational style. So it's, it's a style where you try and tell the story as much as possible through what's being done in, you know, pro the process um, rather than talking heads. Um, it is definitely a style choice, yeah. 
Cool. Well, let's move on to the next film. And if anyone has, you know, we can, we'll do um, overall questions at the end. So if anyone thinks of a question, they can ask it later. Um, so the next film is Canopy. I did that last summer, by the way. Um, it was, it's an example of a, a quick, short piece that someone contacted me uh, about, Odile Campagnon, who's an architect for the uh, American Institute of Architecture Film Challenge, where an architect and a filmmaker uh, get together and collaborate to make a film. Um, so that's all I'll say right now. This tree is amazing. It's seen all of these houses before they were destroyed. A lot of these lots have been made vacant and now we're really happy to make this live again. say welcome to Unity Park and thank each and every one of you for coming out, especially Mr. Yo-Yo Ma. I was so excited when they <laughs> told me you was coming. North Lawndale was incorporated into Chicago in 1869. That means this year we're celebrating 150 years of existence. Today, here in North Lawndale, we are making a tree planting. Okay, one, two, three, go. These shovels are made from guns from Chicago that were destroyed, cut in pieces, melted down by a blacksmith here in North Lawndale. If we can transform matter, we can also transform society. I'm living in this area for 1963. My son have a tree out here, uh, the cinnamon tree down on the end down there. <laughs> it was so special to have the Yo-Yo Ma event at that particular park because their work has gone largely unnoticed and they've really had to move mountains to make their garden and that space a space of beauty and safety and care. And I was here when they told us it's not going to last. And as you can see, not only are we lasting, we're growing. This is like the seven layers of, uh, of culture. So you start with uh, the, the root culture, and then the vine culture, and then you have the shrubs. My capstone students in architecture and interior architecture worked with the CCA Academy students to design the whole site. Can we help you with the garden? You can see some of the caterpillars that turn into the I don't even know what it is. Look at that. Oh. <laughs> it's big, huh? There's a caterpillar. There's a caterpillar. Oh, it's going to put it out. This isn't a dill plant, but they like them just as much. Nancy is our sustainability coordinator, and we are doing the food forest on the uh, 1300 block of Pulaski. We planted 70 fruit trees, and we're just getting started good. Come, come into the garden. Yeah, yeah. Right. See this pathway? We worked on this pathway. It was a lot of, lot of uh, weeds and stuff in between the cracks of the pathway. I don't know that many of my students really feel like they have much control or input over anything in their lives at this point. And to be able to participate right alongside of artists and designers and architects in the creation of this space has been really special. North Lawndale has one of the lowest tree canopies in the city of Chicago. It's 16.6 percent and you compare that to Oak Park which is at about 58 percent. So you can see the disparity as you're going down the highway. It's not just planting trees. It's not like coming in and dropping thousands of trees and leaving from the neighborhood. What we, what we had to do is we had to talk a lot and create a culture where they were used to being outside in public space in this area. The world is a paradise, the world is a garden. You have to be reminded that 
that there's no garden without a gardener. It's, it's great, it's like seeing new life, like a baby being born again. And we have a lot of more big ideas that we would like to see done in this park. When you commit to a cause, then you have to stick with it. Very nice. That was a fast, uh, that was a film that we did very quickly last summer. That was a lot of fun. And uh, my friend John Mueller from uh, Community Television Network uh, was the editor on that. He did a beautiful job. So uh, I'm not sure if he's here tonight. He had another event. Uh, he was showing his students films tonight. Um, but uh, hopefully he'll get to see the recorded. Um, hopefully I don't pronounce this wrong. Zyla Gedilau asks, uh, well done, where do I find the shovels made of gunmetal? <laughs> ah, yeah, um, I'm trying to think. They are, uh, so that day, Yo-Yo <laughs> Ma did get a special shovel. <laughs> uh, I don't know if, um, how, available they are but Zyla I'll definitely look into that for you and uh, see if uh, Jorge um, he works out of Mexico um, but um, I'm sure they're available there have been more made since then I'm I'm really not certain where you can get them but I'll look into that for you Well, if there aren't any other questions, the next film is Totalité. Uh, this is a trailer also. So some of these are trailers. Canopy was the full film, but uh, the longer ones, yeah. The trailer, so enjoy. C'est beau ça. When I teach photography, I always insist on the very great deal of freedom that, that, that photography gives. And that's what's interesting, the two, you, you, two very separate entities. You have to be very cautious and you have to be super free. I'm sure they're going to do some synchronized swimming or some <laughs> or maybe, you know, yeah. pyramids, you know, going on top of each other, you know, this is totality. <laughs> yeah, it's coming. Oh, est-ce que j'aime bien ça? Qu'est-ce que c'est? Regarde! It's coming now. See, the darkness is coming. Yes! Oh, j'aime trop! That was neat, Sue. I guess you actually got to see the, the, the eclipse. In Chicago, we didn't really see it. Right. Oh, but I did see some beautiful photographs through the clouds. Uh, yeah, with actually finding the perfect spot was a real adventure with Richard Richard. And, um, and that's in the main film, uh, some of that um, 
looking for that that perfect place uh, to um, photograph. That was a really interesting, you know, I mean, you don't know what it's going to be. It's the luck of the draw, right? So just down the road at Carbondale, where all the NASA cameras were out, they got some quite a bit of cloud coverage. And we found this little hill. And we were at the top of this farm hill. And all around there were clouds, so it made a really beautiful horizon. But the entire sky was clear. We just, it was just a lucky, just lucky, right? Um, Marianne Johnson asked, can you say a little bit about your process? How involved are you in your films, conceiving them, camera work, editing, does it vary? It does vary, but I'm, I'm um, definitely a, a collab, uh, Luminous Films is a collective, really, and um, all of the work I do is collaborative because I do have a full-time job, plus I teach at Columbia. Um, my, the people I work with are uh, people uh, who I've met along the way and uh, kind of uh, asked to come on board because of their amazing talents, like Justin Jones, who I see here today. Um, so um, I'm mainly a shooter. Um, I love being out with my camera. I'm uh, mainly a very Tay style or observational style videographer. Um, I prefer not to edit because I work at a computer all day long doing Photoshop. So I hire out my editing. I do a lot of graphics. I do color correct. Uh, so I color correct the films and I really enjoy color correcting. Um, and, and then the process of editing, um, it's a collaborative process. So the people I work with, uh, if someone's an editor and, and they're also uh, a co-producer, co-director, you know, we work together. Um, so I do, most of my work has been a co-production co or co-direction. Yeah. Um, did that answer your question? I think so. Um, well, Laura Sabransky has her hand up. Um, so I don't know if you want to either um, unmute yourself and say it, or you can type it. Oh, is Laura there? Can she hear me? Yeah, I Hi, assume so. Oh, I should look for her question. She's got her hand up. Maybe that was accidental. I don't know. Oh. Hi, Laura. Well, if you have it, come on, come on, come out and say it to us whenever you want, or type it in the chat, and I'll read it. Or later. You might have hit it accidentally. Um, any other questions now? It's been really neat to see just like the variety of stuff that you've worked on. You know, it's been just like so many different types of things to see that breadth. Um, the next film is the trailer for Sisters March. be quiet. Now's the time to rise up and most importantly, fight for this sisterhood. Unity is one large step to freedom. I'm an intersectional feminist. I don't think you can have feminism without intersectionality. Uh, you know, I'm a woman too. I can't choose, I can't split myself in half and put my woman's side on one side and my blackness on the other. She was a freedom fighter and she taught all of us how to fight. Well, it's just a really good experience to have with your mom to be fighting for your own rights as a woman together. It's also a comfort and, you know, to see so many people share our beliefs, stands for justice and what's right. So people need to put themselves in the shoes of others and educate on the history of this country, the history of their ancestors first, 
And that's the easiest way you can relate it to what's happening now and realize that none of us would be here if it weren't for refugees and none of us would be here if it weren't for immigrants. Well, being here is just like a lot of solidarity and I really just appreciate seeing such a like diverse crowd of people and also just like the intersectionality being addressed like in every speech. Um, so I just I feel really hopeful right now um, and that's a really good feeling considering yesterday was really difficult. It's also that we need to not be so exclusive when it comes to women's rights. We need to have allies, we need to have people of all different types, not just white women get to do this or it's African American women, we should also, you know, include different, you know, cultures. It's we're fighting for equality for all, you know. So it's important to let people keep joining and not to just have like a cutoff date for when feminism is like a huge boom. It's that everyone can join and bring in their own experiences at any time. We made a promise to those women who are our friends, our neighbors, our sisters, that I would do all that I could do to tell their story, tell their narratives, and to tell their truth. Great, so if anyone saw that trailer and wants to see the whole thing, um, Lori put it online on Vimeo and we'll send a link to everyone who attended if you wanna follow up and watch the full uh, program. I think it's about a half hour. Does anyone have any questions or comments now? Well, if not, we can move straight into the light of truth. Did you want to do that, Lori, or the uh, Musher trailer? I know you wanted to do it. Uh, well, let's do the Musher trailer. Uh, do you, is that okay? Can you do the Musher trailer now and then the Light of Truth last? Sorry, I just yeah. had the wrong order. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So last minute, I was able to get the Musher trailer. It's um, We're working on, we've been working on um, the film Musher uh, for a few years now because it's somewhat longitudinal. And, um, and so this trailer is a little little dated but this is all about archives so that's cool um uh we've been uh we'll probably have our film about four female mushers um on the lake superior south shore circuit uh i think uh ready probably next year um so here it is the trailer 
a teaser, really. Thanks. It's not just a sled dog race, it's a sled dog race. It's probably one of the most beautiful parts of the country. There's some magic in mushing. There's an ingredient in me that just isn't found in other sports. At the end of the day, you know, these, these people, these mushers that go out and they, they run these dog teams, they do it because they love it. You know, they do it because they got the bug, uh, it bit them in, and they really want to run dogs. Great. Um, so I put the links to the full version of Sisters March and Totalité in the chat, but we'll also just send it out in a, in a recap email to everyone later if you don't manage to get the link now. Um, so Skip Blumberg asks, your sound mixes are very powerful. Can you talk a bit about the importance of sync sound? Uh, Skip, that's great. Uh, I'm glad you enjoyed it. That last one, there were some sound issues, so apologies for that. I don't know if you guys were able to hear um, so sync sound, yes, for, uh, of course, with, um, as a shooter, you know, it's very, very important to, to not, not forget because we'll, we tend to be camera people tend to be very, you know, uh, visually, um, focused. And so it's really, really important to me as a documentary filmmaker to find excellent field, uh, sound recordists and, um, and especially with films like, uh, especially when we're talking about films in nature, um, uh, where the music is, is the natural, are the natural sounds like the cicadas you can hear back there. Um, in some cases, like the Women's March film, the Sisters March film, we had real, really, uh, uh, we had uh, rough sound issues and luckily we had an amazing uh, post sound engineer Vikas Deo, who has also post sound uh, engineered our film Totalité, and um, uh, Sisters March had a lot of issues because we were really uh, guerrilla style run and gunning it with a, a Sennheiser mic. Uh, there was a lot of noise, and I, I know that anyone out there who's shot at uh, at demonstrations, it's it's a little tricky. And I'm still learning. I'm always learning. So that's the other thing about being a filmmaker, right? Um, but yeah, we always try and get top-notch sound recordists when we, when we do go out. Ginny Sykes asks, at what stage do you bring in music? Oh, great question. Yeah. So, you know, it's funny. Um, kind of depends on the uh, piece. Uh, but I would say in most cases, it's... Uh, in post, um, it's usually after the film has been made, uh, shot, and in production, and 
and then in post, uh, just because of the nature of doc this kind of documentary. Um, in the case of Totalité, which is also very interesting, um, again, going back to uh, looking at uh, possibly having someone do music, um, when uh, Vikas looked at it, and he is also a musician, um, he really thought that the sounds, the natural sounds of that film were the music, and I really appreciated his um, uh, bringing that to to me as, you know, convincing me that, that that would be the music of the film because I thought it was, was a very good idea, you know? So, yeah, it definitely depends on the on the project, but usually near the end. Nice to see you, Jenny. <laughs> um, Laura Sabransky says, I was gonna say the same about the sound. As you know, I'm very excited about Musher. I get chills watching the teaser. I love how you shoot subjects that catch your attention. What have you passed up recently? What have I passed up? Ah, um, <laughs> Hi, Laura. Yeah, I don't pass out much, to tell you the truth. That's, <laughs> that's the problem. Um, yeah, I love uh, the one piece I'm working on right now that's a so, sort of like canopy uh, is the film about the uh, vegan food drive um, folks, uh, Cruelty Free You and Me. A friend of mine is vegan and um, and she said, let's, would you like to make a series of films about um, animal rights and, and veganism in Chicago? And so we are actually mid production on a, on a quick little series of shorts. Um, and again, Justin Jones is helping us with uh, camera work and sound um, at this point. So, uh, and I'm also, as you know, my big, big piece right now um, that we're in production on is the uh, film, The Light of Truth, uh, a monument for Ida B. Wells. And um, one of my co-producers, Judy Singleton is here. And I imagine Rana, the director is also here somewhere. Um, Rana Siegel. So uh, that film, we're, uh, we, Rana cut a really beautiful little uh, six minute piece about the uh, 100th anniversary of suff suffragists because um, Ida B was such a big part of that um, movement to, uh, as a black woman in the United States to work on um, getting the vote for black women in, in America. So, um, so we're going to be launching that uh, next week, because for one, the 26th, it, we, we have an event with Ginny Sykes, who's here, through the Chicago Women's History Center, but I believe um, the following weekend, we're going to have a little, um, possibly Zoom or event, um, but we want to share that a six-minute piece with everybody, so that just, that's happening. There's a lot happening right now, Laura, <laughs> a lot happening. Um, so, um, yeah, and I wish I could be out shooting at the, at the protests and stuff, but, you know, it's, uh, right now I'm trying to just get out to I Grow Chicago with Bridget and Justin and, and do the little, um, vegan piece. We, we're also shooting Aaron's Farm. It's a farm, uh, an animal sanctuary for animals uh, who have been basically saved from, uh, bad factory farming situations or auctions or people who've passed and have exotic animals that they can't keep. So that's another little section of that we're just starting. Um, so yeah, so if everyone um, would like, I will send, before we look at the next uh, trailer, uh, which is the last trailer, I believe, um, about uh, our monument to Ida B. Wells film. Um, I'll put in the message, uh, the website uh, that Bridget built, my friend Bridget, who I'm making the other film with. And, um, and we're also doing a crowdfunder for that. So that's part of the 
uh, the treat of having this six minute um, film uh, cut uh, to, to celebrate the 100th anniversary of, of the 19th Amendment. Um, and it, it really does explain um, the history of that time. So anyway, enjoy. I hope that answered your question, Laura. And uh, so enjoy um, this next one, and I'll type that in for you. Thank you for all of your great questions and comments, by the way. Great to see everyone, Larry. <laughs> OK. Thanks, guys. Was this woman who understood that there could be no civil rights without women's rights? Who was this woman who stood against the most barbaric act committable for her era to lynch black men, black women, and yes, black children? Who was this woman who took up her pen and wrote about our rights and marched for them and helped us to get a little bit closer to gaining them? Ida B. Ida B. Ida B. Wells. The monument to Ida B. Wells, um, I personally think is important, not just because I'm related to her, but because there are very few monuments to women in this country, and when you break it down by race, it's in a minuscule number of monuments that, are, that represent black women. The Ida B. Wells Commemorative Art Committee uh, made a decision that we wanted to have the monument be interpretive and abstract because we felt that Ida herself was so multidimensional that we wanted it to not be one um, like pose of hers. And we wanted somebody who was a native Chicagoan, who was familiar with the history of Bronzeville. And so our dream was to get Richard Hunt. I'm in the design development process of the Ida B. Wells uh, commemorative. The sculpture will be welded and cast bronze uh, and with some granite. This piece will be in a park that's now part of the site of the Ida B. Wells homes, some early public housing, you know, there in the Bronzeville area. The site is on the corner of 37th and Langley. And she lived not far from where the site is. And one of the things I noticed when it comes to public spaces is that people were starting to go to Ida's gravesite to place I voted stickers on election day. And then some people were starting to even have little ceremonies on her birthday in the cemetery. And so that made me realize, you know, people really do need a, a specific location that they can go to in order to honor somebody that they really have respect for. The monument can become a place, a destination that people can feel drawn to and honor her the way they want to. Wow, so that was really great to see that trailer for that work in progress. And um, Lori shared a link um, both to the website for the film as well as to the crowdfunding um, page. So definitely support that if you want to help make this film get made. Um, so we're really glad you all joined us today. And since we are also a nonprofit, we're also going to do a little 60 second pitch from our board member for donations. And then we will move on to the after party where everyone will be able to ask questions 
whenever they want. I'm not going to moderate anymore. You can all talk. Um, so Levi will play the 60 second pitch and then you can all feel free to um, be done with it or stay on for the after party and ask all the rest of your questions or just socialize and have fun. So here comes the pitch. I am asking you to please donate to mediaburn.org. If you go to our website, mediaburn.org, you uh, and click on donate, uh, you can easily make a donation. The minimal donation that we're asking for is $25. It would be great if you could give more, and it's okay if you only can manage less. The important thing is by donating to us, you give us a vote of confidence. You let us know how important you think, how valuable you think the work we're doing to preserve individual points of view is. So I hope that you will please donate to mediaburn.org. Hopefully at least $25, maybe more, but less is okay too. The important thing is to make a commitment to Media Burn and to the work that we're doing. Thank you. Okay, so um, I, as I mentioned, I'm not gonna moderate anymore, but there was one question that was in the chat from before. Um, Joan Logway had asked, what camera do you use? Do you shoot with your iPhone? And again, everyone just feel free to ask questions without my permission from now on, because now we're, we're partying. <laughs> and and um, feel free to take a break and get a drink whatever you want to do and stay on as long as you feel like it, or you can feel free to leave now. So thanks everyone. Oh. I shoot with uh, the Canon FX100 um, mainly these days. A uh, camera belongs to Chicago Women's History Center. And because I am the official event uh, videographer for Marianne Johnson and, and our wonderful Chicago Women's History Center. Um, I, I use, take care of the camera and use it for a lot of these shoots. Of course, uh, Sisters March, for instance, I had um, my previous student, Jess, from my Documenting Social Injustice film. She came on board with her DSLR. I see Bill Sacco here today, and he helped our friend Tessa in Chicago shoot the Sisters March. Uh, and Bill, you had the same camera as I did, right? And I think- Yeah, yeah I did. Yeah, it's a great camera. It's really for an HD camera. It has really a beautiful image. And, uh, and we've got to talk afterwards because I've got a student who just did a, a North Lawndale, South Lawndale documentary. And it's just beautiful. And she's like 15 years old and she's going to be a star. Mm. Yes. Right. All right. I want to meet her and see the films. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. So, uh, Joan, so we do use a number of cameras. Um, Justin has um, the new Panasonic mirrorless camera. Uh, I've been investing in camera, uh, camera package for Luminous Films Collective. And so that's part of like a light kit and sound and everything. So uh, right now, Ron is using uh, also a Panasonic. So we're gonna try and keep our cameras the same um, for the color space. We're not, not sure right now if we're gonna get another one for Ida B. Wells project, but um, uh, we're working on that. Um, different cameras. More work for the colorists. Hi, Tom. <laughs> uh, any other questions? It's nice to see Marianne. Laurie, and, how, how long will your musher film be? Is that going to be a feature film? Yes, it's a feature. Um, usually with uh, a film like musher, well, we'll uh, create a length that uh, works uh, for film festival submissions, um, somewhat strategic, and then a broadcast length. I think it's 57 minutes, I'm not sure about that. But uh, we may have more than one length uh, 
will probably have a, a somewhat slightly longer, maybe an hour long, or maybe a little less than that for festivals, but it would still be considered you know, a feature length. Um, and yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Lori, I'm curious, where did you shoot the Musher film? Uh, where was that, the, the trailer that you showed? Yeah, well, the, the Copper Dog 150, the race, that big race, which is kind of the culmination of, um, uh, it's one of the big races that all of our uh, subjects end up at, is on, is, uh, it starts in Calumet, uh, in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. Uh, it begins in Calumet, it, and it goes to Eagle River, one leg goes to Eagle, Har uh, Eagle Harbor, depending on if they're running the 150 mile or the 80 mile. And then they uh, go to Copper Harbor, which is at the very, very tip of the Keweenaw Peninsula, the Upper Peninsula. And then, and then the last leg is back to Calumet. And everyone loves that race because it's, it's challenging and beautiful and well-organized. So, um, and then we shot, of course, we shot our, our subjects in Wisconsin, in Grand Marais, in uh, Duluth, near Duluth. So we did a lot of nice long road trips <laughs> <laughs> into the woods. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Hi, Elaine. <laughs> It's good to see everybody. Great job, Lori. Great job. Thanks, Marianne. I'm going to run now. See you okay. soon. I'll see, see you soon. soon. Yeah. Bye. Bye. See you soon, Judy. Yes, bye. bye. It was great. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Hello. Lori, can you hear me? Yes. It's Lori. Sorry, I didn't put on my video. Anyway, I, just, I also wanted to say you look great. <laughs> <laughs> you do. You look relaxed. Thanks. <laughs> and also, I didn't realize to watching all of these clips how much the emotion comes through. And I know that has to come from you as a filmmaker with your heart reaching theirs. It's really moving. Thank you. I like people and animals. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, by the way, the sanctuary you're going to, which one is it? Because there is a sanctuary I've been wanting to go to that's kind of like a couple hours away, but it doesn't sound like that one. What's the name of it again? So Erin's Farm, Erin, E-R-I-N. She has a sanctuary that's near Hobart, uh, Indiana. It's an oh. hour drive, an hour away. And she has all kinds of interesting animals. You want help with that? Let me know. Love yeah. to go. <laughs> I'll let you know when we're going. We're going to be going soon because my friend Bridget's 13 year old daughter wants to be a volunteer and we're making that. Oh, together. nice. So. Wonderful. Thank you. So glad you did it, Laurie. It's great. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Great. And Laurie, it was just so wonderful seeing such a, a wide variety of your work and, and seeing it in one, one time and place. And it, it really, um, it's really a, a, a body of work you can be proud of, and, and it's just such a joy to watch. Thanks, Bill. And thanks for all the help on, Bill is one of our collaborators, so thank you so much for helping me with my films. Okay, well, thanks. It was fun. See you soon. Yes, okay. I'm, I'm going to uh, hang up now because I'm going to get off to other things, but thank you so much for, for being part of this. Yeah, thank you. This was a fun format. Yeah, okay. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you, Lori. Thanks, Elaine. Thanks for coming. <laughs> Elaine's I'm leaving fun. too, so thank you very much. It was, I'm sorry I was late. Nice to but, meet you, Joan. Really yeah. nice to see you. No, thank you. It was beautiful. To, I mean, they were really nice pieces. I'm going to go. I have the websites. I mean, oh, your good. site, Vimeo, so I can go back and see what I missed. Great. So, thank right. you. Enjoy. All right. Night, everyone. Bye. Bye. All right. So, if any anyone likes uh, 
likes working on films. Tom, you're a your teacher. Are you teaching, Tom, this semester? No. <laughs> Tom and I taught in the uh, document uh, documentary um, program at Columbia College. Uh, document doc documentary and social change, right? Right. It's called television and social change. I don't know what's going on there, but I know you're still there and I haven't been there in years. What's it like over there these days? Well, last semester I was teaching, uh, last spring I was teaching culture, race and media and um, I in, the, in the TV department and uh, when the pandemic hit, right? And uh, so uh, we went virtual and it was kind of a a lot of new, a lot of new things for us, and it was uh, almost the end of the semester too, so it was pretty rough for the students. It had to be, well, it was rough for everyone, but uh, I think the students did amazing work. You know, we we ended up doing beautiful work, but uh, but it was emotional and and you know very difficult. So now, what's happening? Uh, is I'm, sh I'm teaching documenting social injustice as a hybrid class and um, we'll be meeting in the um, film row theater I believe maybe three times but that's uh, it's possible that it's uh, changeable organic I'm not sure yet um, that's what it appears I it'll just have to be virtual I mean I'm going out and shooting outdoors outdoors with masks you know, at Ibro Chicago, at the farmer's market, at, you know, these sanctuaries, the kind of projects the students will be doing, um, will be able to talk about shooting in, in safe environments, in safe ways, especially outdoors and with masks on and with a wireless lab, you know. So I think it's definitely doable. And I'm sure most of my, uh, I'm sure a number of my students at least will be coming to a class with the title documenting social injustice, having, you know, shot at protests and understanding how live streaming and how um, our, our phones are excellent cameras now and all the amazing things that we can do to be uh, advocates and activists with our with our cameras and our sound out there. I think definitely a dem democratization with these iPhones, right? Some um, of them are really good. Sarah and I want to see them on, on the protest. Students work on Your sound is, is a little, um, I'm having a hard time hearing you, Tom. I'm, I'm saying some of those protest videos and um, life in the COVID world are things that we are really interested in. We're trying to put together uh, uh, programs, projects to do that. Yeah. Um, please let Sarah and or me know Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. It'll be interesting to see what, what we do, especially with the monuments too, right? The monuments coming down and um, I don't know, Chicago, every, every day is a new, new drama in the United States, so. What'll happen tonight? Yeah, right. <laughs> Yeah. Wow, you have such an amazing organization, you guys. Thanks, Sarah and Tom and Levi for doing this and and inviting me. And thank you, Judy Hoffman, wherever you are, I think. I don't know if she's here. Yeah, thanks so much for doing this. We're This was uh, such a treat. Thanks. I really appreciate it. It's good to see everyone. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Hey, Stay healthy. Stay strong. Yes. Stay sane. Okay. <laughs>